friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Arpita Karva and in this video, I'm going to talk about how you can choose a research topic. Now, this video is relevant for all those who are planning to do their PhD or who want to present a research paper in any uh, university or who are in their master's final year and are looking forward to do their dissertation or if you have enrolled yourself in an MPhil program, in that case too, this video is going to help you a lot. Now, choosing a research topic is the most challenging part of any research because it is the base and it is the starting point of the research. If you don't choose a research topic appropriately, chances are that you might end up leaving the research altogether. I have seen a lot of students who struggle with their research topic, take up anything, start doing their research and towards the end of their PhD, they find that their guides have altogether rejected the topic and they have to begin again by choosing another topic which is more appropriate. Or else, if you have not chosen a specific appropriate topic, you might yourself leave the research because you don't know where to go, what to do, how to justify the topic. So in this video, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide which is going to help you to choose a research topic very easily and start with your research. So let's start. Now, the first important thing that you must remember when you decide to choose a research topic is your interest area. Yes, guys, you should always remember the fact that the research topic should be from your interest area. There are a lot of students who call me every day and ask me that, ma'am, can you please suggest me a research topic? And I sometimes wonder that you would probably come tomorrow and ask me that, ma'am, I think you are well read and you are well educated. So is it OK if you can select a life partner for me? You would never do that, right? Because you know that life partner cannot be selected by anybody. You need to know your own likes, dislikes, your own compatibility with a person and only then you can decide whom to marry. The same thing exists in the case of choosing a research topic. Research topic is very individualistic. You need to see a topic, you need to choose a topic which appeals to you. I'm an anti-feminist. So if somebody asks me that, okay, you have to do a feminist study of some particular author or a particular work, I would really be unhappy. I would not know what to do, what not to do, and I would not feel like doing the research. On the other hand, my interest areas are psychology and mythology. So if I choose a topic which is related to these two areas, I would feel like doing research. I would feel like studying a lot more and finding out my own interpretation. So you need to always remember the fact that if you are not happy, the learning would not occur. So the first prominent factor in any field of study is your interest area. Now, the first important thing that you need to understand here is that look into the vast field of literature, into the ocean of literature and decide what is your interest area. It can be a particular literary movement like transcendentalism, romanticism, modernism. It can be a particular literary theory, for example, Marxism, psychoanalytical criticism or maybe feminism. It can be a particular author. Maybe you are a big fan of Shakespeare or Jane Austen or maybe Jerry Pinto. So you can even take up that writer and, you know, look at that writer from a very, very new angle. Another important area where you can do your research is any literary art form. For example, paintings, cinema, all these important art forms are nowadays incorporated in literary research. So if you are really interested in knowing uh, more about cinema, filmatography, cinematography, in that case, take up a book and its adaptation. Okay, you can take up a movie and the book on which that movie was based and then do a comparative study. That would be a great thing. Or you can take up a particular literary genre, maybe crime fiction, detective, or maybe if you're interested in children's literature. So by knowing your interest area, you actually know what you would like to invest your next three years into. 
for example my interest area is psychology and i'm really very interested in studies of books as well as movies so i took up these two movies dear zindagi and eat pray love which uh, has julia roberts as the leading star and i devised a topic based on my interest area so my topic the initial research topic was quest of self discovery a comparative study of the female protagonist in dear zindagi and eat pray and love so you can see how i was able to figure out a topic by knowing my interest area better so in the similar fashion you can also know your interest area and then figure out what particular topic would you like to do a research on After knowing your interest area the next important thing that you must do in order to finalize a research topic is background study let's first look at the aim of research what do you think is the aim of research aim of research is either to find out some new fact or to revisit the existing fact and look at it and see if they are still valid today so basically research aims at adding something new to the existing body of knowledge now if you take up a research topic on which a lot of work has already been done then you would just be copying from a place and pasting it in your research and that will not be called as a research because you are not adding anything new in the uh, existing body of knowledge so it is very important for you to do a background study of all the works which has already been done on that particular topic for example when i decided to take up a topic uh, in which i would be looking at dear zindagi and eat pray love from psychoanalytical point of view i first saw what works were already done in this particular field and i found out that a lot of works have been done on these movies but they have been done from feminist point of view nobody has actually compared these two works and looked at both these works from psychoanalytical point of view so i knew that i'm going to add something new to the existing body of knowledge now it doesn't matter that you're taking up a new author like jerry pinto and doing a research because nobody has ever done a research on him you can also take up any old author like shakespeare or jane austen or george eliot and look at their works from a different angle which is still not explored so when you will be reading the previous research papers of scholars who have done some work in this particular field where you will be working on you would find out the research gap now what is a research gap a research gap is areas which were left unexplored in the previous researches and from that particular research gap you will get your topic so make it a habit before choosing a research topic you go through different articles journals and existing research papers and then figure out a research gap and finally you take up either a totally unexplored area or a partially unexplored area and begin your research also remember that this background study is going to help you a lot when you will be writing your synopsis or you will be writing an introduction to your thesis because in your synopsis you need to justify your topic and also mention the previous works which have been done in that particular topic a review of literature is an essential part of a research and if you don't do it then your research is not complete and finally another important thing that you must understand before you decide your research topic is to limit the genus now what do you mean by limiting a genus if you take up a very bulky topic for example exploring symbolism in the poetry of wb yeats this seems to be a very simple and a very sweet research topic but you cannot understand how bulky this topic is there have been more than 250 poems written by wb yeats and each poem contains millions of symbols so how are you going to present all of this in a research paper or in a phd thesis of about 250 pages now this is a very bulky topic and this is going to be a never ending research so what is important is to become specific after you know your interest area after you know uh, the research gaps in the previous researches you need to make your research topic extremely specific or else you would find that if you've taken a very open ended research topic you are going to go haywire 
and you will never reach a definite conclusion at the end of the research and you might find that your entire PhD thesis was uh, concluded to be nothing at the end. So in that case what is important is that you know a very specific topic and how would you get to a specific topic? Understand either take up two or three authors or take up few selected works of one particular author. If you take up five authors and you are researching on 10 works of each of them, you would find that in a PhD thesis of 250 pages, you would just be summarizing and giving an introduction to all of these works. And that would not be a PhD thesis. That would be a mere summary of 50 works. So it is important either you take up two authors and one one work of each author or you take up one author and few works of that author but become very selective in what you are choosing. Also understand the fact that whenever you are doing a background study you should always take up works which you have read and also you must uh, note that it's not ju just that the work you would be talking about in your entire research you would also be bringing a lot of different associated theories. For example, if you are doing a research on post-colonial literature and any particular writer like Chinua Achibe, you need to bring in Bill Brown's theory of thing. Bill Brown is a great post-colonial thinker who said that in all these post-colonial works, you will find that the post-colonial world represent thing theory. What is this thing theory? Every colonized person feels as if he has no identity in the world and his existence is reduced to a thing. If he is not of any use, people are going to throw him. So his existence is merely an existence of a thing. So whenever you are doing a research on any post-colonial work, you need to bring all these different and associated theories and look at these theories as well as their interpretation on the work that you have picked up for your research. So your research would not only go around the two or three authors you have chosen, but it is also going to go beyond that. You are going to explore a lot of theories and you are going to look at those works in the light of those theories. So have the habit of limiting your genus before you finally decide your research topic. With that note, I would like to end this video lecture. It was really amazing amazing discussing this topic with you guys and I would also be making a lot of videos on PhD research paper, how to write a research paper, how to go about with your PhD thesis and what are the mistakes that you should avoid doing and how you can make this journey of PhD a lot more easier and a lot more fulfilling. So stay tuned to this channel if you've not yet subscribed then it's time to subscribe to this channel because I'll be posting a lot of videos on all these topics in the upcoming weeks. Apart from that, another important announcement I would like to make, registrations are open for the online course of UGC Net English Literature according to the new syllabus. You can look at the list of all the writers that we uh, cover in our online course in detail on our website www.arpatakarva.com. The link is given in the description box below. If you like the course content we are providing, you can definitely join us and a the benefit of 800 audio lectures, 200 plus PDF and 3000 mock test question. We make sure that your preparation is extremely easy and you don't need to go anywhere else for more material or for more information. Apart from that, you can also subscribe to our different social media platforms so that you are tuned to the latest UGC Net updates. Uh, we have our presence in all the major social media platforms so you can follow us on these platforms and get updated about the recent changes in UGC Net. So that's it for this video lecture. We'll meet soon in the next video lecture. Till the time we meet next. Happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpatakarva.com.